I'm so excited about what I'm going to be sharing with you today. It's going to be a very practical message. Uh, we're not going to take a long time to do this. Why? Because I know that this is a type of um, season for you to receive the word, chew on it, digest it, you know, uh, 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 enjoy it, but apply it. And this is why, again, this is a journey. All right. So I'm not looking to change you in and all at one time, but that the change of your life and experience will be over time. Grab your Bibles if you can. We're going to go uh, uh, into the word of God to John, the 10th chapter, John, the 10th chapter. And we're going to keep in step with our new teaching, our series. Just do it. What I love about this ministry is we teach in practicality, not theoretical religion, not theoretical spirituality, but practical application of God's word that is bound to give you result. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So just do it. It's all about that. You getting to understand, seeing the reflection of yourself in the mirror of the word of God. Cause you know, James said the word of God is like a mirror, right? The reflection of yourself in the word of God and not seeing who you are, but seeing who you are to be not seeing who you are, but seeing who you are to be. Who are you to be in God? Who are you to be in your family, in the community, in this time of history? Who are you to be? In order to understand who you are to be, we got to first identify. And like I shared with you earlier, as a father, my job is to bring identity. It's the mother's job to bring nourishment. See, if you don't understand those roles, see, I, it's not my job just to nourish you. Not my job to placate to your feelings. My job is to show you this is who you are and this is how to get it done. And let me tell you, the believer is more powerful than you knew. Some of you have been saved all your life. I, with a, a long time. That's what I mean when I say that. You've been saved for such a time, for so long. But the reality is, what has been your results? So let's go right to the word of God. Amen. Go right to the word of God. We're going to go to John, the 10th chapter. We're going to look at verse 30. I think it's very appropriate for today. John the 10th chapter, verse 30, and it's going to be right on your screen. That's John 10, St. John, the gospel of God in 10, verse 30. And here's what the scripture says here. And it's going to say something so profound, and I'm going to break this down. I'm going to give you just five points today. Five points, five simple points, but I need you to have understanding. John 10, verse 30, here's what the word of the Lord says. And this is Jesus speaking. And watch what Jesus says. He says, I, Christ, and the Father, Abba, Father, Jehovah, uh, uh, Yahweh, are one. He said, I and the Father are one. He said, I and the Father are one. So this is what I want to talk today from the subject. I want to talk today from the subject, God in me. That's right. Just do it. Why? Because God's in me. And the word is already blessed. And blessed are the hearers. And blessed are the receivers of the word. Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin to go forward in this season of our life, the first thing I want to encourage you as your spiritual leader or spiritual father is to do it. Just do it. Do what you may say. Do the thing that God has put on your heart. Do the thing that you feel passionate about. Do the thing that you are desiring. Because oftentimes in life, the reason why some people don't take action is because they don't have the confidence it can be done. Nothing wrong with it. Because we learned that Jesus taught us, and that's why I love teaching on Christ in the new covenant, because he taught us, he said in Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to them that believe. So my issue is not on if it can be done. It's all possible. My issue is, do I really believe? And when we look here at what's happening here, and I want to give you the proper context uh, to what is, being, what is being said here, Jesus is making a bold statement whereby he's presenting himself as a good shepherd, and he's now inside of a debate with the spiritual leaders of this day. Church folk, theoretical practitioners of what they call the truth. And when he's in this debate, he makes this bold claim, a claim that is not only for Christ, a claim for you and I. Are you listening? He says this bold claim to him. He says, I and the father are one. 
Now, those who are in the audience, especially the religious folk, like you tripping. What kind of ministry is this? Talking about you can be saved and paid. You can be healed and thrilled. You can be uh, uh, free to be. What kind of ministry is this? Nah, you got to suffer. No, see, that was the religious leaders because they didn't have the adequate relationship with God the way Christ brought this new covenant in. So when you talk about people who've been saved for a long time and they are living by these rules and these regulations and, and, and trying to uh, uh, move by their works, Christ says, no, nah, it's by grace that you are saved, not of works. It is your faith that God says, in spite of your yesterday, regardless of your past, your past won't last when the race by God's grace. That's not mine. That's Bishop Milton Parrish. Your past won't last when the race by God's grace. And that's the truth. When you understand that we are at the place of grace, here's my question to you. What are you going to do? Who are you going to be? What are you going to become? Because what you got to realize, and this is what we try to teach you, is that you are the creator of your own experience. The only limitation in life is you. Repeat that after me. Say, the only limitation in my life is me. Say it one more time. The only limitation in my life is me. I'm my only limitation. I'm the only one that keeps me from the next level. Not my haters, not my doubters, not my, dis my disintegrators, not those who want to see me fail. They can't keep me from the next level. I'm the only one who keeps me from the next level. Why? Because I don't have my identity right. Write this down if you're taking notes. Write down identity. Identity. I, we've, we've taught you, we'll continue to teach you that when you change your identity, you change your behavior. When you start seeing yourself or acting healed, then you'll behave like you're healed. Healing manifests. When you see yourself as the righteousness of God, you act like the righteousness of God. What happens? Righteousness manifests. When you see yourself being prosperous, and you act prosperous through your generosity, no matter how what you have, it's your generosity that matters. Guess what happened? More comes your way. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to teach you that as within, so without. What happens within you is what you experience outside of you. And if you don't like your current results, look in the mirror. And I'm not talking about the, the, the natural mirror. I'm talking about look in the mirror of the word of God to see who you ought to become. That's your identity. That's my goal right now today to help you change your identity. Because if you change your identity, you automatically change your behavior. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When you change your identity, you change your behavior. It's that simple. But who going to help me change my identity? Because watch this. Uh... In order for me to be all those kind and wonderful words that have been shared uh, about me during this day, I had to first see myself as that type of man, that type of father. When I saw myself as that type of man, that type of father, I started to behave in that type of way. People say, well, why are you so generous? i tell you why. Because I see myself prosperous. I behave prosperous. So guess what inevitably come my way? Prosperity. Are you getting, are you picking up what I'm laying down? My point is this, ladies and gentlemen, you got to change. And this is what Jesus did. Jesus came to religious leaders and he said, hey, let me show you how this really works. See, you had an idea of God, but let me really show you how this works. The son of God is coming. And in John, uh, the, uh, the, the 10th chapter, the 30th verse, put it back on the screen. Watch what it says here. He says, I and the Father are one. Now, I told you I'm going to show you five uh, uh, perspectives or observations from what Jesus said that, that you need to understand before we conclude this message today. Five of them. Five things you must grasp, you must get, you must be able to realize that the first thing, uh, uh, or before I get into it, I want you to understand Jesus was identifying the presence of God in him. And in this ministry, we teach this. We teach that God is not some guy in the sky. He is also in you and I. The spirit of God dwells in me. When I show up, I not only show up, I don't show up by myself. I show up with the presence of God. How? How can the spirit of something be in you if 
that which the spirit is connected to is not within you. And so Jesus, he began to teach us this, and he's teaching these religious leaders who are not getting it. They're not understanding it. Why? Because they haven't been taught it. And the problem with dealing with people who already know, you ever dealt with somebody who already know? I know, I know, I know, I got all the answers. Is you can't tell them nothing. Because they already concluded that they already have the way, even though their way is not working for them. I've dealt with that many times before. Many times before. You know, one of my pet peeves is when I'm talking to somebody and they tell me, I know, I know, I know, I know. If you know, how come you're not doing? So in essence, you really don't know. And this is what Jesus is doing with these religious leaders. These, these, these religious leaders, he's saying to them, he said, listen, they're in a debate now. They're inside of this debate. And in this debate uh, with these Jewish religious leaders, Jesus is saying, hey, I and the Father are one. When you see me, you see the Father. They couldn't get that. That goes against our tradition. And we teach you here in this ministry that when truth confronts your tradition, truth should be accepted. That's the story of the Bible. Jesus, who was the truth, John 14 and 6. Jesus is the truth. The son of God, Yeshua. All right? Yeshua, which was his true name, Jesus is the son of God. He is the truth. He, this is what he says from his own mouth, John 14 and 6. He says, he, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. So now the religious leaders couldn't get with this because they're like, uh-uh, wait a minute. What do you mean you the way? No, that's not what Moses taught. That's not, and Jesus said, wait, I came to fulfill the law. I am the fulfillment of the law and the presence of God is in me. And if I am one with the father, I came to bring this revelation to mankind that you are not apart from God. Like some religious leaders will want you to feel like, because some people want to be the only one who got the connection with the father. We teach you here. Every one of you have the connection to the father. If I prophesy to you, my prophecy should be confirmation because the spirit of God is in you. And it teaches you in the old Testament, the spirit of God wasn't in everybody. That's what Pentecost was all about. Pentecost was when the spirit of God came and rested within the, the, the believers. Up until that time, God then chose to use the prophet, use the judge, use those leaders who was the only ones. And certain denominations have made it a practice that if you want to be absolved from your sins, you've got to go to the priest who's supposed to have only the connection to, 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 to absolve you from your sins, tell you to do 10 Hail Marys, and everything going to be all right. Well, listen to me. Jesus said, hey, I came to do away with all that. Listen, there's a whole nother way. Here's the other way. Now when you sin, confess your faults directly to God. And he, watch this, will forgive you and then cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We see that in Hebrews 8 where Jesus says, I'm dealing differently with the sins of mankind. The religious leaders didn't like that because what the religious leaders did was they then began to feel like they're being put out of a job. And I believe this, that when you know the truth, if you are part of this ministry and I teach you the truth, I don't have to worry about you living any type of way. Because when you see yourself as the righteousness of God, that's your identity, you're going to behave as the righteousness of God. Now, I've always didn't have this revelation. I've always didn't understand this truth. But when I understood it, I rejected my tradition, embraced the truth, and that's what I give you. So ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand, you have to realize that the truth came to tradition and tradition fought against it because the religious leaders, they thought that this was very audacious. They thought it was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, that Jesus is saying, him and the Father are one. Now, I want you to understand that when Jesus claimed to be one with God, he was in essence saying, I'm equal with God. And this is what the scriptures begin to teach us. And some, again, I'm not trying to teach you uh, um, denominational doctrine or teachings. I'm trying to give you new covenant understanding that you and God are equal. Now, here's the thing. Even though you are of the same family, sharing the same thing, how do we know that that's the truth? 
When, you were, when man was created in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26, we don't have to turn there, but just write it down. Genesis 1, 26. When man was created, this is what Jesus said. Uh, this is what the Trinity said. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit came together. They said, let us, plural, not singular, make man in our image after our likeness. Now, what does that mean? That means I was made to look like God as a spirit being. Uh, uh, that's the image. And the likeness, meaning I have his ability. That's the power. And we teach you here that you got three tools to operate successfully in this realm. Anybody know what those tools are? Go ahead and put it in the chat. I got to drill it into you every opportunity I got because I need you to understand it. Those, we got some new people who may be tuning in, who may be listening to a replay of this. What are the three tools that God has given you to live your better life in this realm? All right, ready? Number one, your mind, your thoughts, how you think. Number two, your mouth. What you speak. There you go. Come on. It's right there on the screen. And thirdly, your actions or your movement, your inspired actions. These are the tools that God has given us to be like him in this realm that Jesus is now coming to activate this authority inside of us to tell you you are more powerful than you know. And he said, the best way for me to break it down to you is in this one statement. I and the father. I won. He claims this equality with God. Now, at this point when he's saying this, watch what happens to the religious leaders. And we see this in verse 31. Right? Let's go to verse 31. Go to John 10, 31. Put that on the screen. Watch what verse 31 says. Then the religious, the church folk, these are not sinners Jesus is talking to. Your, sometimes your greatest challenge will, will be with religious folk. You hear you trying to walk with relationship with God and religious folk, uh-uh, we don't do it that way. If you're not talking according to this and that and this way and that way, then you're off and you're heretic and you're heresy. No, I'm sorry. Then that's why they thought they looked at Jesus. Because how do we know this? Watch what the scripture says here in, in John 10, 31. In, dirt, in, in verse 30, he says, I and the Father are one. The church folk, they, in verse 31, watch what he says in verse 31. They took up stones and they tried to stone him. They were planning on killing Jesus. And again, I say this not the Lord. I believe because Jesus was messing with their job security. I'm not saying you shouldn't have religious leaders in your life or spiritual leaders in your life. We all need leaders in our life. But here's my point. If as your leader, as your pastor, if I'm telling you that I'm the only one who hears God and you can't make a move until I go before the Father and then come back and tell you it's okay, that is manipulation, that is not God, and you need to run. Get out of this ministry if that's what I'm telling you. And you know why you won't run? Because that's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that I have a role in your life. I have a role to teach you the truth, to lead you in the way. But also you have a role to acknowledge and recognize the authority that is within you. And that authority is the spirit of God. See, the religious leaders were planning on killing Jesus because they said that he was committing blasphemy. How are you a man trying to make yourself God? This is what they said in, in verse 1033. Go to, go to the 33rd verse. Go drop down the 33rd verse. We're going to stick here for a minute. The Jews answered him, the church folk, the same folk who tried to kill him. And they said... Uh, uh, for a good work, we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, make yourself God. He says, and that's what they were saying. Yeah, we should kill you. How you a man trying to make yourself God? Jesus said, you missed it. I'm not trying to make myself God. I'm telling you the spirit of God is in me. And he's given us an understanding to realize that you and I, as the children of God, made in his image, after his likeness, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means you are like God. You don't believe me? All right. Let's go down to, uh, go down to verse um, 34. Go to 34. Watch John 10, 34. Watch what it says here. All right. So the first thing you must understand, the first observation here is, and this is what I want you to write down. Write this down. Write this down as your first point. It won't be on the screen. I want you to write it down. Ready? All right. You're going to write this down. Ready? God is in me. God is in me. Now, I didn't say you was God. I said God is in me. 
He is in you. This spirit dwells in us. So if his spirit dwells in us, how can you not succeed in life? How can you not overcome the challenges that you're facing? If you're not moving by your power or your might, but by the spirit of the Lord, of course you can. Because you're more powerful than you know. And this will go against your tradition, but it's truth. And like I told you, truth have to go over tradition. So watch what it says in verse 34. When they tripping over Jesus, they, how are you going to make yourself equal with God? Jesus said, well, let me give you your law. This is your law, you religious, you religious leaders. Watch what it says in verse 34. Ready? And Jesus answered them and said, is it not within your law, the law that you teach, that you are God's? Now, you note here that the word God here, lowercase g, is not an uppercase g. shows the significance of levels of authority, but the same equality in operation. So a God, anytime we refer to God on paper and, and scripture and anything, you always see an uppercase g. Anytime you, re, you see God in, in this context, you see a lowercase g. But the same operation. How so? See, I'm a father. And I have a son that's a junior, the second. We don't say junior, we say the second, right? All right, now, he is from me. My blood runs in him. But I am the senior, and he's the second. I'm the first, he's the second. Do you see the difference here? So God is the first, you are the second, but you have his power and his authority. Am I helping anybody already? Put your hands up if, put your hand up if, 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 you, if you know I'm helping you. Come on, if I'm helping you. Because when you get the revelation of this, you look at any challenge in life and say, I don't know how I'm going to get over it, but I'm going to get over this. I'm going to come through this. I'm going to be victorious. How so? Verse 34. You are God's. Now, let's go, go to Psalms 82 and 6. We're going to break from John. Go over to Psalms 82 and 6. Let's read exactly what Jesus was quoting from when Jesus says, your law says this. Jesus is putting it right back. Ain't it funny how some people will try to hold you to a standard they themselves don't live by. They say it, and then you hold them to what they say, and oh, 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 I didn't mean it like that. No, but that's what you said. And that's what Jesus is saying. You said this, I'm only showing you exactly how this works. The Spirit of God dwells in me, God in me. The reason why we tell you to just do it, because you're not doing it by yourself. You're doing it with the power of the God of all universe operating within you. And that will fight against your religious tradition because you haven't been taught that. You ain't taught that in Sunday school. You're not taught that in a denomination in which you was a part of or, or come from. But this is the new covenant where Jesus is teaching us a better way on how to be victorious. How your later can be greater. How what's coming can be better than what's been. How is not too late for you to be great? Why? Because I'm now identifying myself as what is found here in, in, in Psalms 82 and 6. Let's go to Psalms 82, 6. Ready? Watch what scripture says here. And now this is what Jesus was quoting from in the, inside of the New Covenant, the New Testament, from the Old Testament, the laws that the religious leaders would teach. He says, I have said, you are God's. And all of you are children of the Most High. So you are God's lowercase g, same lowercase g. Remember I taught you that? Children of who? The Most High. So there's a distinction between the daddy and the second. There's a distinction between the daddy and the second. But get this. The daddy dwells in us. The daddy dwells in us. He dwells in you. He dwells in me. Ladies and gentlemen, what you say you will display, what you believe you will receive, and what you doubt you do without. Why? Because you got that God-like ability. You just like your daddy. You just like your daddy. You know what my daddy told me? I'm talking about my heavenly father. You know, you know what he said in this word? He said, let there be light when there was darkness. And what happened? It was light. He said, let there be healing in the presence of sickness. And guess what happened? There was healing. He said, let there be joy in the midst of sorrow. What happened? There was joy. You got that same authority in your world, in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, the second thing I want to tell you today, number one, you're equal with God. God is in you. 
That's the first thing I want you to understand. The second thing I want you to understand is not only is God in you, but you have God's ability. <laughs> Write that down. I have God's ability. Matter of fact, repeat after me. I'm just like my daddy. Just repeat just that. I'm just like my daddy. I ain't talking about your earthly father. I ain't talking about your spiritual father. I'm talking about your heavenly father. I'm just like my daddy. When I say a thing, when I decree a thing, it shall be established. When I think a thing, I shall experience it. Now that's positive or negative. The scripture says, I don't got time to turn there, that uh, uh, um, by your words you shall be uh, 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 condemned or by your words you shall be justified. I condemn myself through my words, not what other people say, through my own words. When I say I can't, I can't. When I say not me, it won't be me. When I say I'll never be able to, I'll never be able to. But on the flip side, when I say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, how does Christ strengthen you? By dwelling in you. See, this is one of my favorite shirts. I like this shirt. Anybody else like it? Anybody else like the shirt? You like the shirt, right? Now watch this, right? Right? Watch this here, right? This is the right arm. This is the left arm. Right arm, left arm. Now apart from me, the shirt have a right arm and a left arm. But the shirt can't do this by itself. The shirt can't do this by itself. What am I saying? I'm saying, thank you so much, Mary. I'm saying, watch this. The shirt only comes alive based upon who's in it. Come on, I hope you get this. If the spirit of God is in you, God's spirit, which represents me in this illustration, you are the shirt. God's spirit is in me. If God's spirit is in me, now the arm of the shirt can move and anywhere the spirit goes, whatever the spirit does, however the spirit moves, guess what? The shirt is strengthened because of the spirit in it. What I'm saying to you is the reason why you can't succeed, glory, oh, I feel good. Oh, I feel God and I feel good right now. The reason why you can't succeed, you can succeed, is because you were made in his image after his likeness and empowered by the Spirit of God in you. So what are you facing this week? What are you facing in this season of your life that you feel overwhelmed by, that you're worried about, that you're, I don't know, I don't know. No, cut all that. Know who you are. Know what Jesus is teaching us here. He says, I and the Father are one. You and the Father are one. For you are little gods under the Most High. And if I'm a God like my daddy, Really? See, when I got the revelation of that, remember identity, when I begin to identify myself as a God, lowercase g, under the most high God, watch this, it's right there in the text. He says, when I begin to identify, identify myself as a God, under the most high God, I started looking at my life saying, oh, this is about to get better. <laughs> Everything around me going to get better. Whatever I'm connected to going to get better. People are going to want to be in business with me. They're going to want to do things with me. Why? Because I got the power and the presence of the Spirit of God in me. And just like I'm wearing this shirt, God's Spirit wears me, and that's what gives me strength. That's why Paul said you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. How else can you be strengthened? See, until I put on the shirt, the shirt will just hang in the closet lifeless. And some of you, because you haven't realized the spirit of God in you, you've been living your life to this point, lifeless. Every day that comes. I know I look kind of funny. But now after today, realizing that God is in me, here's my question. What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What do you want to experience? Oh, I only want to do God's will. Well, find out what God's will is and then exemplify it. And let me tell you what God's will is not, your sickness. 
Let me tell you, oh, glory to God. Let me tell you what God's will is not. Your brokenness. God's will is not your loneliness, your depression. God's will is not your broke or you not having, your lack. That's not God's will. Third John 2, we don't have time to turn there, but he says, I wish above all things that you be in health, even as, uh, that you prosper and be in health, rather, even as your soul prospers. See, right now, what I'm teaching you today, your soul is prospering. Because you're getting your mind, your will, your emotions, you're prospering. You should be amped up right now. I'm telling you, the revelation don't, uh, knowledge I'm giving you right now, when I begin to understand this, I said, the sky's the limit. Ooh, I started, and again, like I taught you in the very beginning of this year, write out the better version of you. Who is the better version of you? Know who that person is. Know who that person is. Because if you know who that person is, now I'm teaching you that there is a spirit, a power from God above that dwells in you and in me that will cause us to succeed. That's why this is a great ministry. Because we teach you through a practical way. And this is all practical. How to live your victorious life. Now, I could uh, take a little time uh, and I can hold my ear uh, and I can tell you how uh, God gonna make a way uh, somehow. Uh, you may not know where. Now, here's the thing. Nothing wrong with anybody who do that because sometimes that's fun. That is fun. Woo! Say it, Reverend. Say it, Pastor. It's fun, but it's all theory. For me to say God going to make a way, but never tell you how he makes the way or the way in which he uh, uh, operates, it's all theories. It will get you excited. But when you find yourself in trouble, when you find yourself in the real thick of the situation and you don't know how to use your mind, you don't know how to use your mouth, you don't know how to use your movement, you, my friend, will then be disillusioned, turn your back on God, turn your back on the church, turn your back on the preachers, and say, all that stuff don't work. And I'm here to tell you, it all works when you work it. Come on, can you write that down? Write that down. I know I'm on point number two. The second point, uh, number two, the second thing I want you to understand is that uh, you have the power of God in you. All right? Know that. All right? All right? Know that God's power is me. Number one, you're equal with God, that God uh, and you are one. Okay? Spirit of God is in you. Don't ever let somebody tell you anything different. You're a sinner. You belong in hell. Sinners in his hands of an angry God. Well, here's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. That anger that God had has been paid and sufficed. How? The cross of Christ. He paid the penalty for the anger of God. Now, I'm not telling you to live any type of way and think it's going to be okay. I'm not saying that. But when you see yourself as the righteousness of God, guess how you're going to live? Righteously. You're going to move with, uh, uh, you're going to, hey, guys, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because the righteousness of God don't do that. Don't operate that way. I live this way. I live by principle. My word is my bond. If I say, I will display. If I show up, I will move in this way. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to get you to realize that you are more powerful than you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? So, so here's, here's the third thing I want you to understand. I want you to understand. I want you to understand. The third thing is, write this down. You have a right to see yourself as God. Now, let me clarify. You're not God, but I am an image and a likeness of the creator of the universe. You have a right to see yourself powerful. Maybe I should say it that way instead of as God because some of you would trip over that. What would you mean I got a right to see myself as God? I mean, see, you need somebody to blame. That's why you don't want to see yourself in power. So when you're going through something, uh, well, things would have been different if I had somebody to help me. Well, you got you to help you. You got you to help you. You got the word, the truth, and the power to help you. It's the spirit. But as long as you got to have somebody to blame, you're going to want to keep God as the guy in the sky. You're going to want to keep God as that person so far away that if I beg him enough, if I plead enough, if I just, he going to work it out for me. Well, here's the thing. You you, let me show you how God works it out in you. See, you manifest through your imagination. How do you see yourself? I work on my mind every day, all the time. There's some of you who try to call me throughout the day. And, and if you call me at a certain time, I'm telling you, I'm in meditation right now. I, I, I'll hit you back. 
What am I doing? I'm working on the image of me to see myself as what the scripture is displaying here. Go now, go back to John 10, 34. All right, we getting ready to close out. All right, because I'm over, I'm almost over time. Glory to God. This is some good stuff, huh? If this is some good stuff, somebody put good stuff in the chat. Put good stuff in the chat. Let's read. Then Jesus answered them and said, Is it not written in your law that I said you are gods? Lowercase g. Verse 35. Watch what it says here. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. You know what this means? If you are called gods, and the word of God, God said the word of God is what came from God. We ain't talking about the just the Bible. People think the word of God synonymous with the book. And the book contains the words of God. The words of God calls you a lowercase g God. You have this power. You have this authority. You can succeed. You can get past anything you're facing. If you're sick, you can be healed. How? The Spirit of God is in you. So let me show you how this works. I and the Father are one. When you see me, you see the Father. When people see you, they should see God. When they see your success, they should see God. When they, and, and then likewise, when they see your brokenness and all this other stuff, that they also see God. Now, let me tell you this. If I came before you and I just showed you a life of rundown and all kinds of stuff and, you know, I'm always begging and, uh, you know, ain't got nothing and no results in my life. But I tell you, accept Jesus into your heart. He going to make everything better. But you're like, well, pastor, how he making everything better and I don't see nothing better in your life? Now you got a problem. And you should have that problem because if the word doesn't work, and I meant this wholeheartedly, if this word, if God's way did not work, I would not be here. I would not be your pastor. We would not be having this, this service today where I'm teaching you. If it, would, if it didn't work. But let me tell you, it works. It works. I'm going to close out on this last point. It works when you work it. Write that down. It works when I work it. It works. Somebody put that in the chat. And all we're teaching you in this ministry is how to work the word. How to use your mind, your mouth, and your movement according to the will of God that you can experience the joy of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, somebody lift your hands and say thank you. Just lift your hands for a moment and say, say thank you. Because if you understand God in you, God in me, you will walk in victory. And any, anybody who's religious who tried to fight against that, well, I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, the scripture talks about that too. I, I'm not going to get there. Maybe I'll deal with that next week. He said that the spiritual things, the natural man can't understand. Because they're not, they're not naturally discerned. They're spiritually discerned. What I'm teaching you is spiritually discerned. And you feel it in your spirit. How do you think you made it this far? Some of you stumbled your way to this place. But you still made it. With all odds against you. I still made it. But Jesus came teaching this to them. And he says, in short, if what I'm saying, if I'm not doing the works of God based on what I'm saying, then don't believe me. He says, if I say that I and God are one, but I'm not healing people, there's no results, and I'm not causing blind eyes to open, and I'm not making an impact in people's lives, then don't believe me. But if what I'm doing is working, I need you to open your eyes, change your identity, and see things differently. You are more powerful than you know. And then watch what he says. He gives us all, as a new covenant believers, insight to realize that once we get the revelation of God in us. Now again, God being in you doesn't take him out of the sky. He's omniscient. What do I mean? I'm saying he's just not in the sky alone. He's in us too. He's omnipresent, the same presence of God that is in, in heaven, the third heavens, is also in you by his spirit. You've got this power and this authority. You've got to practice your power. You've got to be a constant practitioner of the truth and the principles of the word of God. That's why we tell you to get the book. I'm not trying to get, get you to get the book because I want you to buy the book so I can have money. No, I'm telling you to get the book because in the book of principles, that will cause you to prosper.
by changing your identity. That's my, my job as a pastor is to change your identity. Change how you see you. Change how you see you. Not to bury, marry, or carry you, but change how you see you according to the truth of God's word and according in our ministry, the truth according to the new covenant. Because Jesus came teaching new covenant. So let's go to John. What did I tell you go? John 14. Let's go to John 14. And we're going to look at verse 12. 14 and 12. John 14 and 12. We're going to close out here. Now, now that Jesus gave them the revelation, I am the father of one, he then began to teach them who they are as a result of that revelation. What is their, what is known as the power of eternity, attorney? You know, your power of attorney is somebody who's able to act on your behalf. He says, now that you know who you are, now you can act on my behalf. Watch what he says here. Let's put it on the screen. John 14 and 12. Valley, valley, I say unto you, he or she that believes on me, he that believes what I'm teaching you, who gets the revelation of what I'm laying down, the works that I do, shall they do also, and greater works than these, because I'm going into the Father. He said, now you got the revelation of the Spirit of me, of God, through me being in you. I'm going to go on the right-hand side of the Father. I'm going to pass the baton, and now I'm going to put it on you. And this is why I tell you, you are the creator of your own experience. Nobody to blame if you don't have but you. Nobody to complain but you. You don't like the way your life is right now? Do something different. Change it. You've got the Spirit of God in you. I ain't talking to unbelievers. Now, if you're an unbeliever, you need to have that activated in your life by accepting Christ. But if you have accepted Christ, how you broke bound and down? How you busted and disgusted and you a believer? I ain't see that in the word of God. Wait a minute. Every time I saw the believer, that was in a place of power. Not a place of destitution. And the people, many people that Jesus healed, they didn't know Jesus. So he told them after he healed them, now go and sin no more. And that says go and be who you've been created to be. Because I got the sin thing. I'm going to put this thing on the cross. I'm going to pay the penalty and I'm going to give you the victory. Christ paid the penalty for me to have the victory. Christ paid the penalty for me to have the victory. Christ paid the penalty for me to have the victory. Christ paid the penalty for you to have the victory. And this is what he says. He says, put it back on the screen. Greater works shall you do because I'm going into the Father in heaven. You believe in me. You believe in this understanding, this teaching. You're going to be more powerful than you knew. Because I'm going to my Father in heaven. Now let's go to verse 13 and 14. We're going to close it out right here. We're done. We're done. We're done. Verse 13. Because of his power. It's all on you, ladies and gentlemen. What, he, then, then he tells us how to use our tools. Because of his power, whatsoever you ask, decree, or declare... In my name, that means in me as I'm in you, that will I do that God may be glorified in heaven. He said because of this power, whatever you say, you will display that God gets the glory. I said all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't talk about wealth transfer if I don't have the wealth transferred. I can't talk about these things, these principles, if they're not operating in my life. Many of you know, those of you know here, you know what you give to this ministry. You know if you support continuously or not. But do we ever track anybody down, twisting their arms? Why aren't you giving? You need to give. You better give. Blah, blah, blah. No, we don't do that. Your giving, your results of, is going to be based upon your giving, your support. you see it. And if you don't give, the lack the frustration, all those things, your bad money management will be your results. I ain't got to chase you down. I just look at your results. What's your results? Are you seeing this? So the principle is, ask in my name. 
And I'm going to give it to you that God be glorified in heaven. The last of the scripture, verse 14. And this is so profound. Write this down. We're going to close out with this. This is a good place to close out. Good place to close out. I'm closing my Bible. My Bible's closed. Glory to God. John 14 and 14. And, and, and write this down. Memorize this, ladies and gentlemen. Get this in your heart. This is powerful. This is powerful. He says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. What's our theme this month? Just do it. He says, if you ask anything in my name, knowing the spirit of God dwells in you, knowing you are a little God under the most high God, knowing you got power and authority, if you ask it in my name, if you ask it through me, I will give it to you. How many of you need success? How many of you need help? How many of you need victory in your life right now? How many of you need the results that God has promised? Then you need to start speaking it now. We got this thing with my daughter, right? Many of you know my, my daughter is winning the battle over lupus. Autoimmune disease. And we got this thing now where if I see her and I ask her how she's doing, she don't tell me a litany of things that's going wrong. If she's not filling up the par, she says, it's getting better. I know when she says it's getting better, okay, she's not at the, she's, you know, she's kind of going through her thing. What is she doing? She's calling those things that be not as though they were. It's getting better. Now, if I ask her, how you doing? She's like, oh, great. Oh, man, super fantastic. Awesome. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right. I see you there. But when she says it's getting better, what's she doing? She refused, and we teach, like I'm teaching you, refuse to speak the opposite of what you want to see. Because your words got power. You're just like your daddy. When he said, let there be light, guess what happened? Light came. Light didn't say, hmm, let me think about it. Let me have a council meeting. Let me have a board meeting. Let me, uh, uh, let's, let's capitulate the idea of whether we should illuminate based upon one person saying it. No, they didn't. he said, let there be, and it became. If you are just like your daddy with the presence of God in you, then everything you say, you will display. When you say, I can't, you won't. When you say, I don't have, I don't know where I'm going to get this, you, same thing. You got to retrain yourself. This is why Jesus came to teach us how to do this thing with the Father. And the only people who got mad at him and upset at him was the church folk, the religious leaders. May you not be one of them, but may you be the believer who truly, truly believe. I believe, put that scripture back up there, media team. I believe this. I believe John 14 and 14. That if I ask anything in the name of Jesus, which means in his authority, he going to do it. So this is why this series is so powerful to me. Because now I realize, like never before, I am my only limitation. You are your only limitation. And this week, if you want the victory, just do it. This week, if you want to succeed, just do it. This week, if you want to walk in peace and happiness, just do it. This week, if you want to change and have your life rearranged, just do it. This week, if you want to walk in prosperity, just do it. Do it now. Do it with the power of God and the Spirit of God, just like me in this shirt, will illuminate your life that whatever the Spirit of God does, See, I can't lift my arm this way and the shirt stay down. It don't work that way. What controls it is what's in it. Oh, I feel God on that point. What controls it is what's in it. Here's the question. Who's in you? God. If God is in me, then what controls me to win? God. His spirit dwells in you. And dwells in me. We got to stop here today. But I'm going to pick up on the next next week. When we do a part two of this. We're going to go even more deeper. Because the more you understand this teaching of God in me. The less you stop. The more you stop rather. Seeing God as a guy in the sky. Your sky daddy. 
and you start realizing, God, every day you're with me, even when I feel lonely, even when I feel brokenhearted, even when I feel like it's too difficult for me to move, I know you're with me. And that's what gives me strength. That's what gives you strength. Glory to God. So we're going to stop right here today. Have you been blessed by the word? If you've been blessed by this word, if you really are starting to see yourself different, change your identity, change your behavior. When I start knowing differently, I can act, act differently. I don't care what it is. The new house. I don't care whether the new job, the new opportunity. I don't care if it's more money. I don't care if it's a better relationship. Know that it's possible. Know that it can happen. Know that you got the authority. Because the reason why we tell you to do it, because you're supposed to be doing it. Greater work shall you do. Because I go into the Father in heaven, Jesus says. But he couldn't have that conversation about greater works unless he first had the conversation about I and the Father are one. And if God is all, was in me, his spirit is also in you. You got that same spark of all creation. You got the same energy that started everything dwelling in you by his spirit. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, then everything I taught today is possible for you. But the first thing is you can't get to the father. You can't have the revelation of the father except through Yeshua, except through uh, Jesus. So I want to challenge you to open your heart to Jesus right now. If you're not saved, I'm going to say a prayer. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. And from this day forth, I believe that I am saved. And I receive the better that should be in my life. If you said that, you believe that, if you decree that, go ahead and we want to hear about it, go ahead and email us. Let us know that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior through this ministry. Let us know that you are understanding better, you're becoming better, you're learning better, and you want to really live better. Let us know because we're going to give you some tools, some resources as far as uh, strategies, books, things that can help you. Uh, now live your life in Jesus Christ. Because now that you're saved, now it's time to live the life. Remember, Jesus says, I am the door. And there's a door to more. The door is only an entryway to a, a greater place. Jesus says, I'm the door to more. I am the door. And if you come through the door, then you're going to have all that God has in store for you. I'm telling you, I've never been so happy to be a believer, to be saved, especially to know I got this authority. So do you.